hand over directly to you, Jipran. Oh, do I introduce you as Huang Jipran or Jipran Huang? Jipran is okay. Okay, uh, I'll go with Huang Jipran. It just sounds because I lived in China before. It, it's weird to. Oh, your pronunciation is is really good. Sophia's is probably better. She lived in China too. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Whoa, that just filled up. Nice. Okay, it's the top of the hour, two o'clock. We're doing things a little earlier than usual this time. It's great to see everyone here. I'm seeing a few old, familiar, old faces. Well, bits of text on screen like Giancarlo, like Sung Su, and <clears throat> some new ones as well, like Diksha, Anya. Isha, Shinchan, Zizbit. <laughs> so yeah, fantastic to see you all here. Welcome to another in the long line of Gina's Engineering All Hands, our event when, where we all get together to listen to cool engineers talk about cool engineering stuff. We're happy this week to welcome Huang Zhipeng from Mindspore in China. He'll be talking about how Mindspore and Gina are doing cool things together. Um, I'll just kick off by going over some recent things that we've been up to at Gina. So first up, thank you so much, so, so much to everyone who helped with our FAQ campaign. We couldn't have done it without the community and all of your FAQs were effing wonderful. So we will have the FAQ doc up on our learning portal in the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled. For anyone, who has any questions or wants to submit a, a, a question to be answered or answer a question, um, check out our Slack. There's a spreadsheet there of all the of where you can get involved. And when you do, you'll have your name forever enshrined in lights on our learning portal. Other cool stuff. So we've got several upcoming events. We don't exactly have fixed times yet, so keep an eye on Slack but we're talking offline events in Berlin. We're talking online office hours. So if you have support queries or you want to talk about your use case or just get to know the Gina team a bit, we'll be doing one of those over Zoom in the coming weeks. So all eyes on Slack people. And finally, from our side, we've got a whole bunch of new example Jupyter notebooks up on our blog. So if you want to learn how to use Fine Tuner, to improve the quality of your search results uh, using the PyTorch, Paddle Paddle, or TensorFlow frameworks, we got you covered. If you want to use Gina's new Docker array, uh, our new library that is a data structure for unstructured data, that's right there on the blog as well. And these are notebooks. You can play with the code, you can change it, you can run it all in your browser. Right, that's it from my side for now. I'll shut my mouth for once in my life. And I'll hand, hand over to Huang Zhipeng. Over to you, Huang. Okay, thank you, Alex. And um, hello, everyone. I, I'm not sure uh, what the time zone uh, you guys are in. So good morning or good afternoon. Uh, guten Tag. Um, uh, so uh, it's a, a really honor uh, to be invited by Gina team uh, to do the EAH. Uh, today and uh, I was going to do some demo. Uh, I was supposed to do some uh, demo today, but I under, uh, underestimate the Spring Festival and uh, uh, all the shenanigans I have to deal with. So uh, I will uh, talk through a slide uh, set, uh, which I normally, uh, which is my like uh, occupies uh, most of my time. I'll hopefully show you guys some of the work in progress. I play a, a, a play a bit uh, with Gina and Mindspore and uh, the fine tuner stuff, which uh, really impresses me. So yeah, hopefully you guys can enjoy the talk. So without further ado, uh, let me just get started. Okay, can you see the slide? 
loud and clear. Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, for uh, those of guys uh, uh, that didn't know me before, uh, I'm currently uh, the director for SEND uh, Open Source Ecosystem uh, at Huawei. Um, and the TAC, which uh, uh, stands for Technical uh, Advisory, I think, uh, Committee for uh, MFAI and Confidential Computing Consortium in uh, uh, Linux Foundation. I previously um, uh, worked at mostly at cloud computing uh, side of things. So uh, I was the co-creator of the policy working group in Kubernetes. Uh, if you are still involved uh, in Kubernetes development, you uh, probably someday will uh, run into this working group and also uh, co-found the security SIG, which is probably the first as uh, SIG in CNCI. And earlier than that, uh, I was in OpenStack. I uh, uh, created a project called Cyborg. Um, it a, has a cool name. It's uh, basically a general uh, management framework for all kinds of accelerators, uh, which are uh, predominant and uh, uh, now uh, for AI applications, but uh, when we uh, when we were doing cyber projects, mostly for uh, telco uh, applications, for uh, net, uh, network uh, function virtualization, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, we have a team in Huawei uh, works on all those, uh, kinds of uh, open source project. It also includes like Onyx, Qflow, uh, Greeno for edge computing. I'm a big fan of heavy metal. Uh, if any of you also shares this uh, uh, enthusiasm, uh, feel free to ping me. I'm on Twitter. Okay. So I'm gonna talk about uh, Mindspore. Uh, what is Mindspore and our community? Uh, our, uh, our team essentially is responsible for building uh, what is TinyMS and uh, uh, what Mindspore, Julia and Gina uh, could do together uh, for a very interesting future. Um, so uh, Mindspore is essentially uh, a, a new deep learning framework uh, developed by Huawei and uh, open source um, uh, March uh, 28th, uh, 2020. So it's barely two years old. Um, so as you can see, this is the uh, offering from the Ascend uh, product line. Uh, so we have offerings for like application development. Uh, we have offering for uh, sort of like CUDA, uh, the counterpart of CUDA uh, we call uh, CAN and the frameworks. Uh, so for Ascend, a platform we support TensorFlow, PyTorch, all, all those uh, mainstream deep learning frameworks, but it works uh, better and uh, achieve amazing performance with Mindspore. Uh, this is just a, a, I think I use a old figure, but uh, just give you a sense of uh, how powerful uh, Mindspore running on a SAN hardware platform is. Um, I, I still remember when we first uh, uh, open source Mindspore, one of the developers uh, took the liberty to run the test on Huawei's cloud uh, himself, found out that uh, uh, he easily beat the uh, TensorFlow on, uh, on V100 and also PyTorch. Um, by like uh, 1.8 times to two times. So um, a, a, a deep learning framework uh, optimized for uh, a ASIC hardware is really powerful. Okay, uh, since this is uh, like engineering uh, hands-on workshop, uh, let's go to the details. What is Mindspore? Uh, so from the genus, uh, Code base, I believe you guys are, are, are pretty familiar with uh, all kinds of frameworks. 
Um, so month support is not just yet another one. Uh, I know there's a trend like a lot of companies are creating, uh, well, reinventing the wheel, uh, sort of speak. However, um, month support is sort of a a a uh, um, uh, implementation uh, implementation of a vision we have uh, for uh, the future you. Uh, uh, evolve of uh, AI frameworks. So uh, for MindSport, uh, other than we provide really like uh, uh, easy to use interfaces, um, we uh, we bring a lot of uh, hardcore feature uh, with it. For example, um, MindSport uh, has a uh, a really big emphasis on uh, compilation optimization. So, so one of the uh, the key features what we call the automatic parallelism. Uh, if you uh, have ever tried like uh, run a distributed uh, cluster uh, to 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 train a really uh, a huge uh, model, you know that uh, parallelism is vital and uh for engineers that uh are are like a data scientist to begin with is sort of a a, a big burden for them so once introduced this uh really cool uh, automatic uh, parallelism uh, mechanism that uh the ai scientists only need to specify a few key parameter and then uh uh, the framework will figure out the best uh, parallel policy for it. So I will just go through a couple of key features. So the first one uh, I mentioned. So basically, uh, once more, uh, we have a, 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 a policy space and uh, we try to uh, do a search and find the optimum uh, policy. Given a set of parameters, which uh, like used to be handcrafted by engineers, uh, like uh, how many uh, hardware, like uh, uh, some cars you have or GPUs you have, uh, what are the uh, communication protocols, uh, what are the memories, you know, how you best to shard the data set or shard the model. Um, so it used to be a lot of handcrafting. But with months more, uh, you just need just one of code uh, to indicate uh, how many cars uh, you have, and framework will uh, take care of the rest. So this is really cool, and it enabled uh, our team to develop the first, I think, uh, 100 billion parameter uh, big model uh, in like sort of the Chinese version of uh, GPT-3 earlier uh, last year. So the second one is uh, second order optimization or we are working on like high order optimization. So second, uh, second order optimization uh, is not a new thing. Uh, a lot of framework uh, or, uh, have already tried to do that, uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, obstacles you need to uh, uh, get over. Like for example, for second order uh, computations, uh, you will encounter a lot of uh, uh, the matrix um, computation, and uh, you need uh, you need to figure out a way of uh, uh, efficiently uh, compute a lot of the uh, has a metrics. Uh, and in the meantime, you don't have like the loss of the gradient, uh, all those things. So MySport is kind of, uh, first thing is this kind to achieve a positive gain uh, for second order uh, training. And uh, well, uh, the Dynamic gra uh, graph and static graph. I think all of the frameworks are support uh, support like both mode now. Uh, but with Munsport and if you are using a sand uh, hardware, it's just one end of code um, to declare the the mode in the contest. Uh, 
and then you are set. Uh, you don't need to uh, do anything else. Okay, since we have hardware offerings like spanning from uh, cell phones and uh, to cloud, uh, Munsport is uh, designed from star uh, to support uh, uh, what we call all scenario. Uh, so that means uh, we have a really strong uh, intermediate uh, representation called Mun IR that could adapt to different uh scenarios and then uh, we adopt different uh compilation strategy uh so that uh for like for scenarios that need really small models uh you can basically have a really lightweight uh month support light model and uh for the cloud uh you have the traditional heavyweight uh size model and well, this is uh, sort of a giving. Uh, if you have a, a really great uh, ASIC uh, hardware offering, uh, you, your framework could be optimized uh, uh, really good. Uh, we, br uh, we bring a lot of tooling too uh, for uh, like profiling and uh, uh, from hardware level to the framework uh, ops, and also uh, uh, my insight, uh, similar to TensorBoard uh, web UI. So one of the things uh, that set Mansports apart is our emphasis on uh, empowering the AI uh, and uh, AI for scientific computing. So what we believe the future directions of AI uh, will be uh, uh, heavily focused on how to empowering scientific computing. Um, so there are some uh, 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 well-known uh, uh, limits for the traditional numeric uh, method. So if you're doing really high dimensional uh, differential equations, uh, will have a huge number of uh, competitions and the boundary conditions are very complex. Uh, you are basically uh, impossible to navigate, but with AI, uh, the, 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 the black box model basically provides a nonlinear feeling, uh, although you don't know why you can do that, but uh, you, you can just solve a high dimensional um questions so uh the last one is uh trust ai i think especially for europe this is a uh like a key area uh more and more companies are, are focusing on now um so for ai security it involves like how do you uh, protect the model from attacks how do you protect uh uh, the model and the data set during training and inference uh, process. And the, um, the more difficult one is provide OS level uh, security uh, protections, uh, we call the enclaves. So if you are familiar with confidential computing or uh, uh, the, something like that. So it uh, basically means you will be running your training task in a TEE. Uh, which is uh, not very performant uh, for sure, but it, it uh, provides a uh, really great security. Okay, so some um, great use cases. So earlier last year, uh, we released the first ever Chinese, the Chinese version of uh, GPT-3. It's a monster uh, model and uh it's it's uh it, it's it's a huge breakthrough so we uh i think we saw a, a flourish of big models after uh, the release of pcil uh another like a really um uh, interesting use case for us and uh, this is for ai powering uh, scientific computing is for uh whether uh, uh now casting now casting means 
So for city, uh, for city like Shenzhen, uh, forecasting is not enough. Uh, most of the uh, area that needs uh, forecasting are looking for really short range uh, 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 predictions. So they call the now casting. So it's a, uh, now cast. Uh, so uh, the Weather Bureau in Shenzhen uh, actually utilized the uh, LRN uh, written in, in Mansport uh, to do that. Uh, it has a, 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 a uh, pretty awesome um, a result now. Uh, this is one of the oldest and one of the uh, the uh, use cases that we are really proud of. Um, so we are uh, collaborating with the Shenzhen Bay Laboratory to develop um, the uh, basically the deep learning um, solutions for uh, molecular dynamics. So as you know, for example, uh, if you if you are in a big pharmaceutical company, you uh, you want to develop like new medicines or um, have like uh, new vaccines for uh, Omicron. Omicron. I don't know how to spell that correctly. Um, one of the key the technologies is using uh, the molecular uh, dynamics uh, basically to predict how the uh, how the protein, uh, how how the protein uh, will be like folding or forming in a way. Uh, so traditionally, this is uh, like requires really high dimensional, like five to a uh, four to five order uh, differentiation uh, to 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 do in the traditional numerical computing. But with the help of uh, deep learning model. It really cut the time uh, in just uh, a couple hours, and uh, with Mindswar, uh, had a great support for like uh, auto differentiation. Uh, the scientists now can do uh, like higher order differentiations uh, with affordable uh, time range. Okay, so uh, other than those those uh, awesome use cases uh, as a big company as Huawei is uh, we also use it like internally, and uh, I think the most stunning figure is the is the the invocations uh, on the cell phone. So as you know, uh, every Huawei phone has shipped with Mindspot light in it. So if you ever use a AI related uh, application on the Huawei phone, you are basically uh, use what Mindspot Lite uh, offers. So we we have like uh, 700 million uh, calls, I think, per day. So this is really a astonishing figure. Okay, uh, now we go to some, uh, going to a lighthearted section of how our team uh, building a Mansport community. Um, so I think in a relatively really short time, we, we've we built uh, the hottest uh, AI open source community in China. Um, it's not only by, by the numbers. Uh, for example, we, we achieve a million, more than well, 1 million downloads uh, uh, in just, just a year's time. And uh, so one of the uh, the things we do for community is uh, that we uh, actually develop uh, solutions that are driven by community. There are two examples. Uh, we collaborate with uh, one of the like nature protection center in China. Uh, we we, we uh, help them develop the first ever uh, there's a pre-trained model for the Sanjiang Yuan, which is the, um, the upstream of the Yangtze River uh, using the ultra-red camcorder. Uh, the other one is we, uh, we use the Mindsport Cyclegan uh, model for 
the tie dyeing craft. Uh, I don't know how to uh, say that in in English, but it's a it's it's a really cool, and I think it's a UN uh, non-material heritage. Uh, so it's it's just a a really uh, long history a historic process of uh, dyeing. <clears throat> Dying a wool or 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 uh, sort of closing, so we used a uh, cycle gun to help uh, one of the uh, AI artists uh, to generate a lot of the 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 the, uh, the new uh, 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 patterns uh, for for the tie dyeing craft. So, like I said, it's not just numbers. We innovate in a way that uh, very few uh, open source community uh, like tried before. For example, we had we, we actually held uh, probably the, the only like AI centric roast in China last year. Uh, it, it was just uh, it was hilarious. Uh, we are looking for the second <laughs> roast uh, uh, this year. Uh, uh, we have <clears throat> We have like a hack week uh, for uh, every uh, half a year. Uh, we organize a uh, women tech events in China, and we held uh, like specific <coughs> topic uh, workshops uh, for like uh, molecular modeling. <coughs> okay. And also, if you go to our uh, official website, we set up like uh, like uh, campaign trails for uh, how do you make contribution in uh, in open source uh, in Mansport community, and we also have a really uh, uh, like a gaming um, uh, uh, certification system for for our developers, so you can like uh, write up the letters. Okay, so uh, we have uh, began like, like our overseas outreach uh, officially uh, uh, at the end of last year. So um, you are more than welcome to uh, like subscribe to uh, uh, our Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Reddit, and uh, yeah, check us out. So okay, I'll quickly go to the. Uh, the next section called Tanya Mass. So what is Tanya Mass? Um, for those of you who are familiar with Kiros or Fast AI, uh, Tanya Mass is open source by, by my team, by team. So it's a high level API uh, toolkit, basically for my sport. Uh, we especially target our uh, 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 our users for those entry level student, or uh, we have developers that are from companies that are not AI centric but only want to use AI capabilities. Uh, so for for those folks, uh, uh, even for a new framework like Mindspore, which is uh, really easy to use uh, in comparison with uh, older. Uh, frameworks is still pretty difficult for them. Uh, so that's why we developed uh, TinyMS to provide just a set of really high level APIs uh, for th those entry level learners um, to quickly uh, uh, have a, a, a on ramp experience with Mansport. Um, so uh, in concept, it's, uh, uh, it's pretty similar to, I think it's more similar to AI uh, than Keras. So we uh, basically abstract away a lot of details from, uh, from MySport so that you can like uh, write your own the net just uh, in one minute, uh, it's possible. Okay, I will just quickly go over the, the several modules. We have the data. Uh, Pre-processing uh, model construction is uh, pretty uh, easy and uh, more easier like training. Uh, this all be uh, um, this is all done with the support of Mansport as a under 
underlying uh, framework. And uh, this is the evaluation matrix. And sorry. <coughs> so we have a quick serving module. Okay. Topic of today. So Julia, I think uh, most of you guys are familiar with Julia, so I won't, uh, well, I'm not an expert. So Julia is a, 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 well, it's not a new programming language, but is a trending uh, programming language for AI uh, in, in recent years. So Julia has been traditionally used for numeric computing and scientific computing. But uh, recently, uh, uh, there has been a lot of development for uh, machine learning and deep learning support in Julia. So uh, there are like two projects that, uh, that, that are, are, uh, are representative. So one is MLJ. Uh, well, MLJ is not uh, like one project. Uh, it's just like a set of packages. And the other one is uh, FluxML, which is now, uh, I think the uh, default uh, deep learning and machine learning pa uh, Julia package uh, we go to. So for uh, if you are not familiar, there's a, a, I don't think I need to show the recording here. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So it's uh, really simple. It's a MLG uh, example. If you install Julia, and uh, in the command uh, command line uh, interface, you can you can just uh, do a quick like um, tutorial uh, for for MLG. Um, but for FluxML, I've tried with FluxML. Uh, I think it's uh, it has uh, great support and uh, it, it's 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 very promising. Uh, to use. So we have been like uh, discussing how Mansour and Julia could work together. And um, there are two possible ways that came up. Uh, so there has been a lot of discussion like Julia, Julia versus uh, PyTorch. And so for Mindspore, uh, its key advantage is its uh, compilation optimization, as, as I just introduced. Uh, so from the Julia, uh, the, 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 the China uh, Julia community feedback. Uh, so uh, we believe uh, probably the best way is to uh, just utilize Mindsport's uh, capability for Cogen uh, for Julia. So essentially uh, we'll develop a Julia compiler plugin. So Julia will be sort of like a pyro or Juson or uh, that kind of front end, uh, front end uh, library, uh, FluxML uh, basically. Uh, so Mindspore will do the coding, especially for large scale clusters. I think this is uh, really beneficial for Julia and Julia could bring a lot of the uh, scientific computing and uh, especially all the capabilities uh, to Mansport. So this is a, a really great way of uh, integration. Uh, the second one is through TinyMS. So uh, we thought about like Julia doesn't have, have this kind of a high high level API so, um, sort of things. So this might be the, the, the second uh, uh, direction we'll be looking at. So to basically give uh, FluxML a high-level API, although it's, it's FluxML is really easy to use uh, as, as it now. So, okay, Julia and Gina and Mindsport. So uh, this is really not uh, like a really combination of the three, but uh, okay, let me, we share the screen. So I'll be just uh, share with you guys the failure I have been. <laughs> well, I'm not a, a, a great developer. So um, anyways, 
Okay, so uh, last year, the first month for uh, integration, there's a blog post right up uh, from Dr. Uh, Xiaohan. Um, <clears throat> so last year, we, we did a quick demo with uh, Gina in its early version and also Mansport in its really early version. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the earlier example of uh, how uh, the fashion amnest uh, data set and uh, you do the fashion demo uh, with Gina. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I found out that the, the Gina itself has, uh, the, 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 the interfaces has evolved a lot. Uh, and uh, there's a just annoying bug uh, in months where uh, still hasn't been, uh, uh, fixed, I think. So there's a annoying pi, uh, PyTest error <laughs> that uh, it's, it, it just wastes, I think, half of my day. I just really, uh, so just give it up. Um, okay, and uh, so for uh, Gina, I, I did a local build. I built the Gina source code uh, locally. I'm, I'm not, a, I'm a huge fan of uh, bare metal, so I like to build uh, source codes. I think there is just one error. Uh, there's a, so I need to like just uh, replace with a with a fixed uh, declaration of the class class names uh, for the compilation to to get through. Uh, otherwise, the the uh, Combination and, and installation is uh, pretty smooth. So I uh, I was looking at this. Uh, maybe I can hack uh, the the uh, the fashion demo uh, here. Uh, but then I I just uh, uh, going oh, uh, going over Gina's uh, official website and find the fine tuner. Uh, which is really cool, I think. So for fine tuner, uh, I think to, from model to embedding and from uh, embedding to model, this will be a, a very useful uh, tool. Um, so the experiment kind of half-assed at the moment is uh, I want to like just add one uh, uh, a new framework support for TinyMS. Uh, why I use TinyMS is that I uh, I think uh, I tried with a high level uh, uh, API. But uh, it should be easier. So many of the high level semantics are are uh, are, uh, are similar between TinyMS and Keras, but uh, the I think the, it's just uh, the devils are, are in, uh, in the details. For example, uh, for TinyMS, since we, we did a really high level uh, abstraction, uh, we kind of, it, 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 it's really difficult to, to just uh, do a, just a simple three layer MLP like, uh, like the other frameworks. I have to find uh, find a way to uh, have uh, our uh, high level APIs to uh, uh, come with a way to 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 form a a layer list. Luckily, we still got uh, several APIs I can use. So I think uh, after I finish this one, should I should be have a working prototype without any uh, tests. Uh, of course. Um, so I think an, an, an another uh, uh, interesting detail is like Monsport is really uh, in a way similar to PyTorch. And when you, when you develop a high level API uh, 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 toolkit for that kind of framework, uh, 10MS has things that are similar to Keras and things that are really similar to PyTorch. So this is an, another stuff I need to navigate uh, through my experiment. So I copy 
over the Keras code and start modifying it. And uh, it was not a trivial uh, task uh, as I uh, envisioned, but uh, it should be, uh, I think I can get it done this week. Uh, after all the uh, PowerPoint work I have to do in the company. Okay, so this is uh, like the, the, the failed demo uh, I've been trying uh, to show you guys. And uh, back to the topic, uh, what's the future for like these three amazing open source uh, project can do together? Uh, I think it opens up a, a great possibility. <clears throat> so Gina for uh, Mansour and Julia, Gina is a great uh, front end um, sort of engine uh, for, for the neural search. Um, so the integration of Mansour and Julia basically bring, brings up the possibility of a uh, running a like large cluster uh, with the support of a, a uh, well, Julia compiles really fast. So we will have, you will have a really performant uh, uh, framework front end for your model. And uh, with integration of Gina, I think probably we'll have a uh, really performant uh, large scale uh, neural search engine uh, that uh, I don't think any other frameworks uh, can do this stuff. Uh, so this is the, uh, this is uh, the future that uh, fascinates me uh, the most, uh, to be honest. And the other one is uh, fine tuner. Fine tuner is uh, really cool stuff. I think uh, uh, to utilize fine tuner for the fine tuning of Mansour and Julia's uh, inter uh, integration, uh, possibly a, a, a Mansour backed uh, FlexML uh, model. Uh, that would be just uh, mind blowing, I think, uh, to see how you convert uh, convert the model to embedding and uh, back and forth. So I hope I uh, I did uh, give you guys a, a, a good enough talk. Uh, so uh, please uh, follow us uh, on various sites and uh, thank you for your time. I think we can go to Q&A. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've already got one question from Giancarlo. Uh, great to see the support for second order optimization. Can you expand on the ResNet training example? Okay, let me. Um, so I, uh, I think as you can see, so for, for second order optimization, we uh, first tried with ResNet. And uh, so in theory, uh, if you have a good enough uh, second order uh, optimization mechanism in hand, you should cut uh, like the, the training in half, basically. However, uh, like I mentioned, a lot of frameworks can even converge uh, when doing the second order optimization. So for ResNet, I think we, uh, yeah, I think this is the, yeah, we run on a, a eight card, uh, ascend uh, nine, uh, 910 uh, device. So it took uh, about uh, 70 minutes to converge con compared to fourth order, uh, accuracy uh, by uh, SGD. Uh, this is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we did BERT uh, after ResNet, but uh, I think this, uh, this slide is, uh, is outdated, but I think in 
uh, in general, uh, the performance gain uh, is comparable uh, with ResNet. So I, I asked uh, the team, so the architecture of the model should not uh, like bother that much. Um, things, the uh, optimizations that we used for ResNet models uh, is also applicable, uh, applicable uh, to BERT. So that means second order organization is uh, could be well uh, generalized for vision tasks and also for uh, NLP tasks. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. And if you have follow up questions, people just post them in the Q and A. Because Giancarlo, I think you and I were thinking of the same question. So if you post that, that'd be cool. A question from Sung Su Park. Is Python and Julia, is knowledge of Python and Julia enough to start participating in the Mindsport community? Oh, Python, uh, Python is, is enough. Julia is, Julia is something uh, we want to experiment uh, this year. So if you know Python, you, you can play with uh, Mindsport now. Oh, I think I should mention this. So starting from 1.6, uh, uh, Mindsport support like, uh, <clears throat> Mac OS. So uh, as you can see, you can you can just compile uh, Mansport uh, or pip install, or if you like me, just compile the source code uh, on your MacBook um, and start just Python programming. Yeah, it's very easy. All right, thank you. Perfect. Uh, I think Giancarlo is writing his question now. So who's your favorite metal band? Oh. Um, That's not his question. I'm just <laughs> I know. Now. So, uh, uh, well, for, for metal has, uh, I think the big four, uh, I, 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 I love them uh, very much. So Metallica, I think, is the most it is my favorite band for uh, for the older generation of, of bands. Um, so for younger generations, uh, um, I think Trivium. <clears throat> um, Trivium is great. And uh, from Germany, uh, Rammstein, um, another, um, I'll just sleep, uh, sleep through my mind. So there's another, uh, I think, uh, what do you call the deathcore band? Oh, Heaven Shelburne. Heaven Shelburne is a great band from Germany. <clears throat> well, I, uh, yeah. So Wacken Festival is like something I keep watching on YouTube and never got, got the chance to go to myself, uh, <laughs> which is a bummer. Um, yeah, that, that shows the level of <laughs> my interest in heavy metal. <laughs> <clears throat> Can you tell us a bit more about the uh, protein stuff? That oh, was sure. In the deck, because uh, Giancarlo actually created an example for protein search using Gina. So oh, we're all really interested in that. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let me go to the... So I, I, uh, I happened to recently just give a talk on the uh, AI scientific uh, in China. So we, we, we use Mindsport to uh, implement FFO2 as well. I think it's, it's the first non-JAX framework actually uh, implemented uh, FFO2's paper and we open source the code as well. Uh, okay, let me find the molecular dynamics. I think, yeah, it's this one. Yeah, so, um, so from what the professors told me uh, <laughs> as much uh, as I can, uh, I can understand. 
Um, so the difficulty lies in that uh, they need to like have a, I, I think have a, a, a history, like a timeline how uh, the atoms, uh, the positions uh, items are related to each other. They need to have a timeline or a history uh, prediction of how uh, those positions are going to evolve. Uh, that's the essential problem for molecular uh, modeling. Uh, that if we want to model that, it's it's just based it's easily like four or five other differentiations uh, you need to do because uh, you need to take the into consideration of the relative positions, uh, the time, and uh, there are a couple other elements uh, I can't remember. So, <clears throat> uh, what like uh, uh, impresses them from AI is that, for example, uh, uh, like the GAN model, uh, you 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 uh, you can just approximate the equations uh, using a deep learning model. Um, so, uh, what they develop is for molecular dynamics. Uh, there are two ways of uh, deep learning. Um, one way, I think they call it the descriptor-based mechanism. Uh, the other one is basically graph uh, uh, GNN-based. Um, so I think the team collaborated with us to go, uh, went with the GNN-based uh, approach. <coughs> so, <coughs> so they, well, Mansport is just a a framework, a tool. So the algorithm, the model they developed called uh, AirNet. Uh, it's it's a I think it's a it's a graphic uh, representation uh, representation of a uh, certain protein, like how 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 uh, uh, how the molecules and how how the atoms uh, relate to each other, uh, represented in a graph, and uh, yeah and. Do do the do the uh, uh, do the training on the graph, and um, they didn't build the model from scratch. I think they built on the backbone of Bird. Uh, so another major obstacle uh, they have to overcome is the data labeling. The cost of data labeling for a molecular modeling is really huge. I they mentioned that they, they, I think they label just one protein for month and it, it just costs like billions of uh, RMB at best. So uh, they, uh, they don't have the luxury to train the model uh, uh, from scratch. Uh, so I think that they picked the backbone of BERT and uh, yeah, basically uh, integrate uh, a, a, a GNN ask uh, <clears throat> um, some layers on top of it uh, to build this new uh, model. It's called AirNet. Yeah, I think I've, I've talked enough uh, as an amateur. <laughs> I think that uh, mostly answers Giancarlo's question, but he gave some follow up stuff as well. Okay. Uh, so he's saying we explored protein structure neural search with Gina by adapting NLP techniques to amino acid sequences. It would be great to see if there are any common interests there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh definitely. So I think this is one of the key areas we will be uh, our, uh, our develop, uh, our core development team will be focusing on uh, uh, for sure. Yeah, I think Gina could do great. Um, I've, I've been like coming through the Gina's code base uh, these days. It just amazes me how you guys uh, like abstract way the, the interfaces is uh, really nicely done. Um, yeah, um, for uh, the neural search uh, with Gina on the uh, <coughs> uh, amino uh, acid. Uh, sequences and uh, protein like uh, prediction uh, uh, absolutely um, 
Uh, like I mentioned, the AlphaFold 2 implementation is already open source. Uh, I can I can just send uh, if there's any uh, uh, any of you guys are interested, I can uh, send you the link. Uh, I think it sh it should be on GitHub as well. So we 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 have a <laughs> sync mechanism from from the Chinese uh, counterpart of GitHub to GitHub. So I think it's it, it should be on GitHub now. So you guys could check it out uh, the the source uh, source code for for uh, for the uh, Alpha Vo two implementation, and then I, I think we can we can do great uh, collaboration. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Think, Jeans and yeah. Gina do go well together. <laughs> oh, I need Jean. Jesus. <laughs> uh, there's intro level article on. Oh yeah. Yeah, the code. Yeah, the code is out of date. <laughs> I just tested. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think those are our, all of our questions. Oh, one more thing from Giancarlo. Okay. Uh, I understood the Encore. Score. Sorry. Encore. Encore. The encore <laughs> of the encore. Uh, I understood that MindSport is the compiler backend for ML models. Is that correct? I thought Julia excelled, especially in its own compiler capabilities. Oh. Uh, it's, so, and, uh, um, what's the advantages of, of MindSpore in this respect? Oh, it, it's, it's, I think it's both cracked and uh, incorrect. Uh, so MindSpore has its own front end. So for, for compiler, uh, which you have to keep in mind, uh, well, for a compiler amateur like me to understand, is that uh, there's always a front end and back end. So for compiler optimization, you always look at these two sides. So front end, there's a front end, and there's there's a back end. Uh, so for for front end is mostly deals with how to uh, translate your source uh, your source code to the IR, and for the back end is mainly deals with uh, what we call the cogen. So to generate a a, uh, a really low level code from your IR. So uh, I think both Julia and, Mans and Mindspore have uh, front end and back end. The integration uh, plan I mentioned uh, actually came from the Julia folks is that <clears throat> Julia as well as PyTorch is not really good at the back end uh, optimization, the cogen optimization. Because for Cogen, you need to deal deals uh, like with a lot of the hardware facing uh, uh, LL, LLVM level uh, optimizations. So uh, for Julia, the best way to integrate a framework like Mindsport is to basically switch on the Mindsport front end with Julia. Uh, in this way, we achieve like we we, we have both of our uh, advantages. So Julia compiles really fast for for a front end, and Mindspore compiles uh, really great, especially for large uh, distributed uh, cluster. Um, so yeah, that way to com combine the strength of both uh, projects. Uh, a miserable way could be like Mindspore's front end with <laughs> Julia's back end. Um, well, uh, that's another topic. Yeah. So anyway, that uh, that's the reason why why the integration uh, planning looks that way. Okay. And yet another question, not from Giancarlo. So this one's from David, who's one of our team of engineers here at Gina. Would this mean yes. MindSpore would be like LLVM for Julia? So the front end of MindSpore would be the typed AST, AST from Julia? Um, I think in a sense, uh, yes. So um, if we switch to like the context of uh, MIR, uh, it will be, uh, <coughs> so MindSpore will uh, uh, became a, a dialect uh, of MIR and then Julia will use um, the Mindspore, uh, 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 the dialect as 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 the cogen. It, it's sort of like that. Since uh, 
uh, since like Julia and Mansour all have, uh, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we all have end-to-end -end, uh, capabilities. So it's not very strict uh, uh, positioning. Um, but uh, I, I think you can put it that way, like, like Julia as a, 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 a uh, 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 like you said, the, the typed AST um, from Julia, so at, as the front end uh, of Mansport. But is uh, Mansport does not sit that low level as LLVM since our cogen uh, actually uh, need to utilize uh, LLVM as well. So it's like sort of like in the middle, I think. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right, I don't see any more questions now. If any of you have questions, speak now or forever hold your peace. Or follow our social account <laughs> to ask questions there. Exactly, just tweet at your palm. Yeah. Great. So thank you so much. We've covered so much. We've covered genes and Gina, bare metal, heavy metal, all the metals. Yeah. So yeah, it's been great having you here, Japan. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's great uh, to be here. All right. And yeah, thank you so much to our community for joining us as well. I've seen a lot of people here, like really good to see all the old faces and newcomers too. So uh, yeah, just to wrap up, if you want to find out more about Mindspore, you can go to what's the place? Uh, just GitHub uh, Mindspore-AI, like Gina. And uh, our website is Mindspore.cn. And uh, there's an English version uh, right on, on the right uh, upside corner that you can switch. Perfect. And as, just just uh, 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 check me out on Twitter. If you have any questions, feel free to DM me. All right. And as I said at the start, uh, we've got a lot of events in the Gina calendar coming up. Not everything's confirmed yet, so keep an eye on our Slack. And yeah, thanks once cool. again, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye from Gina AI. Oh, Wiedersehen.